Support for the Fantasy Football Sackos is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. I can't believe... I'm still blown by this freaking sponsorship, man. Every time I hear it, I know you're not a wrestling fan, and most people aren't wrestling fans, uh, but I'm going to talk about wrestling anyway. I feel... if you go back to like WCW in like the mid to late nineties, they had the NWO uh, with like Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash. And they would like have, um, because it was WCW and they were NWO and like trying to take out the WCW, they would, ha- they would have advertisements and what they would do is they would say the following announcement has been paid for by the new world order. And then like, they would like <laughs> advertise their merch or something like that. And so I, f- <laughs> I feel like, the following podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. Like I just so yeah. Anyway, we're uh, we're talking about players uh, that are uh, we're probably not going to draft as some late second uh, late late second draft advice here for everybody. Uh, we're we're going to hit on some people that uh, we're not big fans of their ADP, uh, and me and Jason probably will not be uh, having much stock in this year. So excited to talk about uh, some players in a negative light, uh, and maybe some people for you to avoid in yours. Yeah, um, I like this list a lot. It is brief, and again, it's th- it doesn't mean that we dislike the players. It just means that we don't like their ADPs, and we don't like where they're. They're being drafted and the potential return on that draft value. We think that there are other guys that we would rather pivot to uh, at these positions. Exactly. So without further ado, let's roll it and let's get into this. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Crow. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos back again for another episode of Fantasy Football Sackos. Jason Shellcross, Alex Krogh. What up? Holding it down. Um, interesting episode today. I feel like we're generally like one of the more positive podcasts. Like we usually try to talk about stuff that and players that we're like positive about, like, Hey, these are our sleepers. These are ADPs that we like, Hey, this guy, whatever, because of injury is now projected to be a, like a top 20 running back or target the, these people. Yeah. Right. Like our mock draft. Like, Oh my God, I love the value here. No. Now we're going to be Not a little, today. We're going to be a little, yeah, we're going to crap on people. We're cra- the Sackos. Yes, that's exactly what's going to happen. We're going to be a little bit, a little bit rude, potentially. Um, so these players that we are talking about today are players that we are going to avoid in fantasy football drafts. So congratulations, everybody. We are coming upon the home stretch of no football this season. This is primetime draft country. You know, enjoy it. You only get one draft. If you haven't listened. Season basically starts in a week, depending on when you're listening to this. It's great. I'm so freaking excited. And if you haven't drafted, if you're drafting over Memorial or excuse me, Labor Day weekend, please do listen to our top 10 draft tips. Just the tips podcast and episode the, and the sleepers and some of the you can see all of our rankings on the fantasy football sackos.com so if you don't have time to go back and listen to our wide receiver one rankings or our running back one rankings or any of our videos on our youtube page at the fantasy football sackos.com you just don't have time uh fantasy football sackos.com all of our rankings Check out the YouTube videos at uh, on YouTube, obviously. Just search for the Fantasy Football Sackos on Google. It pops up. It's the first search bar uh, that, that comes up is literally the, our YouTube page. Uh, over 270 subscribers at this point. We're, we're rocking and rolling. So please, uh, if you want to introduce somebody to the Sackos, that would be the way to do it. Um, yeah, just super excited to have the season start. Um, we're happy that you guys are on the journey with us. Uh, really looking forward to 2021 season after a, a, just a strange 2020 season for a multitude of different reasons. Um, and we have our sea legs underneath of us. We know what we're doing now from a just everything perspective uh, and just 
hopefully bringing you guys the content that you want, crave, and deserve. <laughs> All right. Uh, so our first player to avoid um, drafting, if you can, is Jonathan Taylor with an ADP of six overall. Look, Jonathan Taylor is going to have a great year. He's going to do wonderful things. He will have great weeks. But the ADP is too damn high. He finished as running back six last year and half PPR. If you take out his last week, week 17 against Jacksonville, he would have been running back 16. That's low. That's, that's a good week. Yeah, it's a hell of a week. Seven touchdowns in the last four weeks of the season. In weeks 8 through 10, he had weeks of 4.1, 8.4, and 4.7 with carries of 11, 6, and 7 those weeks. Naheem Hines took some of his production away, and we all know Marlon Mack is coming back healthy this season. Do you think it's a three-headed monster? Do you think it's a split? Or you just think there's too many questions? Well, I feel like Frank Reich will like ride the hot hand. You know, if Naheem Hines is buzzing around and, you know, just man with his hair on fire out there, he's not going to take him out. The same goes for Jonathan Taylor. If he's having a great game and, you know, hitting the holes hard and has a couple catches and doesn't drop them, like, then they'll ride with Jonathan Taylor that game. There's, there's not a lot of other players that you're going to take that high that could just totally disappear in a given week with that exact game script that I just talked about where maybe he starts out with five carries and does nothing with them and they just turn it over to Marlon Mack and say, all right, let's see what he's got or let's see what Naheem Hines is doing for that. That's the only reason that I'm not high on Jonathan Taylor. Dude's clearly great, but you know, I I think that they're going to throw the ball a little bit more now again, that Philip Rivers is not there and Carson Wentz is. I just don't really love Jonathan Taylor for that reason at that value. If you're going to tell me end of round one, beginning of round two, I'm more open to it. I just think that there's other guys there that I would rather have or take uh, in front of Jonathan Taylor, uh, including Zeke and Austin Eckler, I, I think are both better values uh, than Jonathan Taylor at six. That was my question for you is, who would you rather have? So the players that you would rather have are Zeke and Eckler. Do you uh, do you take I, Devontae Adams there? Do yeah, you, I, I would much. I would much rather have Adams. Um, Tyreek. I'd, I'd probably rather have Kelsey um, than Jonathan Taylor. Put him in order for me. When we we're going to leave Jonathan Taylor out. Well, actually, I'll put him in as number four. Zeke, Jonathan Taylor, Devontae Adams, Travis Kelsey. Um, I, th- I love Devonte Adams. I, I think Adams is probably one there. Zeke is two, Kelsey, and then Jonathan Taylor. Okay. Just personally, um, I, I think I think Zeke and Adams are are very close. Um, if you were very anti taking wide receiver early, um, then I, Zeke is the, obviously the guy there. Uh, at least for me personally, uh, I understand if you love Jonathan Taylor. Um, but yeah, I, I would much rather have Zeke better offense. Um, he doesn't have to worry about game script cause he's going to get the goal line carries. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I think Jonathan Taylor, the price you have to pay to get him, uh, is just a little too steep for me. And I will be looking at other places other than Jonathan Taylor. If, if I'm sitting at the six, seven, eight spot. Um, I, I doubt I'm pulling the trigger on him. Yeah. My, uh, my biggest concern isn't even really anything that we've really mentioned yet. It's really just the Carson Wentz health for me. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how well the offense is going to be able to move without him. So even if he misses a one or two weeks, like, Jonathan Taylor is slow for a couple weeks. That really hurts you because that's your first draft pick. I don't want a f- slow couple weeks out of my number one draft pick. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and Marlon Mack is not bad. 
Uh, no, he's just, not bad. Just, just, just as a friendly reminder, two years ago, he had 900 yards, nine touchdowns. Uh, two years ago, uh, almost 1,100 yards. You nine three years ago? Uh, yeah, sorry, 2018, so that'd be three years. Uh, two years ago in 2019, uh, nine yards short of 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. Um, he's had not great receiving numbers, but I mean, that's where Naheem Hines is coming in anyway, as it's kind of a, he's a scat back. Um, so I, I just think that, 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 Is that Taylor's a scat man <laughs> reference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He's a scat back. Naheem Hines. Um, I, I, that's why I would rather look other places than Jonathan Taylor. I don't blame you. All right. Next up we have, Lenny Fournette, Leonard Fournette, ADP of 85. That is, seems a bit high. It's high. It's surprising that it's that high. Wow. It's the beginning of round eight. Um, Yeah. Playoff Lenny has his name for a reason. He shows up when it matters, and that's not the regular season. Now, at at least last year it wasn't. He had four double-digit weeks last year. So is this you discounting him because of Ronald Jones, and then with the signing of Geo, you're just completely out? Yeah, for me, this is a Tom Brady's still in full blown FU mode and he's going to try to throw the ball in as many times and say, I'm 44 and it doesn't matter. I, I just, I have a hard time believing that Leonard Fournette is going to, he doesn't have the upside that you want to take that could end up winning you a league, at least in my opinion, because there's so much competition there. And like you already talked about those double digit weeks. There's not enough of them to be consistent. You don't know what you're going to get out of them. He's sharing the duties with Ronald Jones. They don't, they're going to go with hot hand approach. Maybe, uh, Giovanni Bernard had more double digit weeks than Leonard Fournette did last year. Like the, <laughs> That's a killer. I, I don't want anybody in the backfield, honestly. Um, I don't think anybody has the upside of a running back two or better. Um, because it's just so wide open and split and they're going to throw the ball. Um, other players that are going about that same time as Leonard Fournette in round eight um, that I'd much rather have. Trey Sermon, uh, as you talked about in the Sleepers podcast. Oh my God, uh, yes. W- with the not suitable for work warning. Uh, With his playoff schedule again, Jason absolutely crushed talking about Trey Sermon as a sleeper. So definitely go check that out. Uh, It's both on the YouTube page uh, and uh, in the sleepers podcast, I believe right off the top. Yeah, their incredible schedule. um, Just what San Francisco running backs have done in the past. So definitely check that out. So Trey Sermon's going after uh, Leonard Fournette from an ADP perspective, as are the following other players, Tyler Boyd. Uh, Brandon Cooks, LaVisca Chenault, and Michael Pittman Jr. Um, that we talked about last episode, at least a little bit with the T.Y. Hilton injury news. Uh, I'd much rather have all of those guys. I think they have much higher upside than Leonard Fournette does. And for that reason, that's why I would not take Leonard Fournette because I would rather jump at some other players in the same spot. Yeah, Trey Sermon in the eighth, I think, is incredible. Um, also, Visca. I think Visca is going to finish as a wide receiver too or better this season. So yeah, uh, he's really shown to be uh, Trevor Lawrence's favorite target so far this preseason. Uh, yep, so t- touchdown in the last preseason game. So yeah. I yeah, mean, it, it, the, the table setting up for him to have a real nice year for sure. It's a blessing and a curse having, <laughs> having our uh, fantasy draft so close to the fantasy football season. I mean, ideally that's what you want, right? You want it to be, a day, a couple days before uh, game start, but um, I just see Visca's ADP continuing to climb out of round yeah. eight into round seven, potentially bottom of six. Like 
I just, I think the cat's going to get out of the bag. Hopefully his name keeps him uh, too obscure for, for a lot of people, but I just think he's going to have a hell of a year with Trevor. Who's that? Well, Visca Shai, Shai yeah, Nolte exactly. guy. How do I, who? How do I say that name? Laviska? Yeah, and then they, you know, they spell it wrong so that way they can't even uh, YouTube yeah, it. They can't search. They yeah. can't search for it. Yeah. Fantastic. So, no, I completely agree. Playoff Lenny's ADP is just way too high. I think that he's, uh, for me, I'd take him in round like 11. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I, maybe. And I would, like, you're, you're still going to want better dart throws than that potentially with higher upsides, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculously way too high. So I digress. Next up, we have a wide receiver. So we're going to pivot, hit, hit the pivot table, pivot. move on over. To AJ Brown, currently going as wide receiver seven, pick 20 in the middle of round two. I mean, that's pretty Julio, high. Julio Jones plays for the Titans now. It's true. Like, sh- are we sure? Are we sure that AJ Brown is gonna like keep up his workload? I mean, they threw... Which, which the, isn't even that great either. Like, he's Titans, never had the, the massive targets. The Titans threw the third fewest... I mean, we keep saying this. The Titans threw the third fewest passes last year. Third fewest in the league. Behind the love, Ravens you and the love Patriots. Ryan, you love Ryan Tannehill. I and love Tannehill. I don't... I'm not about AJ. He, he'll, he'll be productive enough, but they just don't throw the ball enough to feed two legit wide receivers uh, it's tough I just it's not there it's not going to happen um, middle of round two AJ Brown wide receiver seven pick third, 20 third fewest passes thrown in the league like just do the math the guy's going to he already he already had to be incredibly efficient to maintain um his uh his output at his yep. current ADP. He already had to be incredibly efficient with his touches. And, and he's now, proven to be. We 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 kind of crapped on him last year too, where it's like, I just can't see this repeating itself. And then it but did. Like, yep, it did. And we're going back to the well again. <laughs> we also have him ranked higher. We because we refuse to rank him um as like a borderline wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two. Um but we've ranked him, I think, as I, I don't even know if we put him in our top twenty-four last year. He might have been. Yeah, I'll check real quick. He might have been the outside looking in, but I know that we do have him higher this season. But it's just he would have to have about a third of all of uh, Tannehill's targets, passes, pass attempts thrown his way to maintain his output. And if you just tell me that you're going to add Julio Jones and he's not going to take away from that. I think you're a damn liar because I think Julio yeah. Jones is a little bit better than Corey Davis. Just a smidge. Better. Slightly. So I'm just I'm out. Yeah. And we I mean, we have him ranked as our 12th best wide receiver, which we're still showing him respect. But that's a big difference from uh, there's a substantial difference from wide receiver 12 and wide receiver 7. Huge. That early? That, that's a big difference. That's a full round probably. Yeah. So, you know, if you want A.J. Brown, go get you some A.J. Brown. I just don't really know what you're looking at because it's not sure their offensive coordinator is now the head coach of the Falcons but like that offense doesn't change nope it's still not going to be Derrick uh, Henry yeah right and as soon as they're up in the second half they're not going to go into all out score mode Derrick Henry is going to run the ball 17 times yeah I mean Julio Jones has been in the league since 2011 uh, he's had uh, fewer than 100 targets in three seasons uh, because he's been hurt essentially in those seasons that, that he did not have 100 targets he was on pace to have well over 100 right. uh, in each of those seasons uh, and 
AJ Brown had targets of 106 and 84 in his first two years. 84 is rookie year, 106 last year. Uh, in 2015, Julio Jones had 203 targets. Literally almost double what AJ Brown has ever had. I, I don't really like Julio Jones for the same reason as we're discussing AJ Brown, but there's just not enough opportunities to feed both of those guys that they can both be going where they're projected to. Um, players I'd rather have instead of AJ Brown, Calvin Ridley is going after him currently in drafts. Justin Jefferson is going after him in drafts. Darren Waller is going after him. Keenan Allen, Terry McLaurin, Allen Robinson. I would rather have all of those guys. Uh, 100,000 percent. Yes. Before I took AJ Brown. So his ADP is too high. The opportunities aren't there. As we talked about in our wide receiver pod, it's all about all about the targets. If you chase the targets, you have a much better shot at being a wide receiver one and wide receiver two than if you don't have the targets. And his targets are so low with Julio Jones there too. I don't see them going substantially up. Like I, I would be shocked if he had more than 120 targets this year. Yeah. 100%. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, AJ Brown. Now, before we get into our next player, support for the Fantasy Football Sackos is brought to you by Manscaped, men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive worldwide. offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code worldwide. SACOS at manscaped.com. That is code SACOS at manscaped.com. S-A-C-K-O-S. Yes, yeah, so this, this, uh, this thing's pretty cool. Uh, Jason, I was showing this to you before we started. Uh, this thing has like a travel lock on it. If you push the button like a bunch of times, it'll like lock itself with the arrows going up so like you can travel with it. And your worst fear, right, is that it's going to run out of batteries. Yeah. Uh, so like if you're on an airplane, it's happened to me before with a trimmer where like it's like, what's that buzzing noise coming from like the overhead uh, <laughs> bin? And you like grab your bag and it's because the button is shifted up on the side and oh, your, your no. trimmer's buzzing. That's not good stuff. You, you, that's uh, is that a trimmer that you got in your bag? What's going on? So you have to like get in there and flip the switch off. Uh, so this thing locks uh, and then you hit the button a bunch of times and it comes on with a light. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, it definitely takes care of you. Um, it's it's been by far and away the best thing that I've used. Uh, Worry free. Uh, no hassle. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. So, uh, again, manscaped.com promo code SACOS, S A C K O S 20% off free shipping worldwide. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped. Yeah. Thanks guys. That's awesome, man. I, I could not imagine the embarrassment of having that happen with the thing going off in the freaking overhead bin. That, that would be yeah. nuts. Yeah, it was one of those things where it happened. I kind of like laughed. I was like, oh, wow, that was... And you're kind of looking around like, dude, whose is that? That was mine. Whoops. <laughs> All right, next up we have Kenny G, Kenny Galladay, going as wide receiver 21, pick 52, middle around five. Tell me why you're avoiding Kenny G this season. Have you seen that clip that's circul circling circling? Is that a word? Uh, the internet. Oh, <laughs> uh, like it was like a inner uh, giant scrimmage or whatever. And Daniel Jones is like sitting there waiting to throw, and he just like throws it fifteen yards into the ground, and nobody's within like five yards yeah. of. It, Daniel Jones is bad, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Been so bad. So do you really want to take? For a while Someone now. that's being drafted as a wide wide receiver two. I mean, with, Dan, with Daniel Jones throwing him the ball, pr pro probably not. Probably not. I mean, I love like 
Careless Whisper, Kenny G, give me some saxophone all day. I know that's not the artist before you destroy me in the YouTube comments. I got it. But I, I, like he was great two years ago. Daniel Jones is not Matthew Stafford. And the Giants threw the ball the seventh least amount of times last year. And that was with no Saquon. Saquon's back. They're going to feed him. They're going to check the ball down to him a ton. I believe Saquon had like, what, 11, 12 targets in the first game before he got hurt against the Steelers because they couldn't run the ball. But it's one of those things where I, I'm not trusting a Giants wide receiver. Evan Ingram's hurt now. I don't really like Sterling Shepard. They have Darius Slayton. They signed Kyle Rudolph. I... I don't really want anything to do with this offense unless you're telling me I can have Saquon. Yikes. Well, they've lost every preseason game so far, if that gives you any clue as to how bad it's going to be for them this year. It's just... I don't... Middle of round five, Kenny Galladay. He was a top five wide receiver two years ago. You know, and was hurt last year. He's a good player. But it's just a quarterback that limits him. It's just... How do you even determine Daniel Jones's ceiling or the offense's ceiling with what has to be probably the worst offensive line in the league? Like, it's not good. Daniel Jones could be a fantastic quarterback or like an average one. Let's just say he's average. Yeah, he's got he's got good wheels. He can run a little bit until he falls down and trips over a yard marker. Average quarterbacks still excel if given the time to make throws. I just don't think he's going to have any damn time. Yeah. I mean, that Joe Judge has said that we're far from a finished product. We know that already. Well, you're not. I think you're like a half-built project product. Um it's just been, it's been really bad. Um, Andrew Thomas, they picked fourth overall in the 2020 NFL draft. He surrendered more pressures, 57, than all but one other tackle last year. Like, oh, yeah. Unofficially, he allowed one and a half sacks, two pressures, and committed a holding penalty in a half of action in their last preseason game. Like, he didn't get better. It's just so bad. So yeah, I just, there's there. Yeah, there there are some definite players that I will be taking before Kenny Galladay. Where that's he's also going why in the I don't round. want Saquon. I haven't drafted Saquon once. Yeah, even like a mock just to see what it looks like. You're no, just like because no I hate it, and I know I'm not going to do it in real life. Like I, he's going. He went third <laughs> in the last mock I did. Like no. Uh-oh. I'm not going to take Saquon. And that's that might be a spicier take than the Jonathan Taylor take was earlier. But like, coming off of an ACL injury with no offensive line, sure, he's going to have a million touches, but for like, what, 62 yards and no scores? Like, I mean, he was electric his rookie year. I mean, there's no was. doubt about it where, where he's going to break... Right, just, he stays healthy. He's going to break a run here or there, but if their line's that bad, yeah, they're going to stack, stack the box, make Daniel Jones beat you, and there, he's not proven that he can do it yet. There's a lot of guys that have similar workloads, and I would yeah. just rather have them with an offensive line, or even if it's not the similar workload, and it is slightly less, but they're on a team that's going to score like three times as many points per week, then I would rather have that player. So Yeah. I agree. There, there's some uh, some guys that are going after Kenny Galladay that I would much rather have than Kenny Galladay. Uh, those players would include Dak Prescott, who, as we've covered previously, uh, was on pace to throw for like, I don't know, 700 times or something last year. And he's cleared uh, for week one. Yeah, he's ready to go, man. They're, they're going to be firing on all cylinders, I think. Uh, Cooper Cup is going after Kenny Galladay, and I would much rather have Cooper Cup uh, with Stafford throwing him the ball than Kenny Galladay and Daniel Jones. Deontay Johnson uh, has a worse ADP than, than Kenny G. I like um, him more than everybody you've mentioned so far. Deontay yeah. Johnson. Yep. He, he's he could finish as a wide receiver one, and he's going in the he, middle of the fifth. He has enough targets where 
hopefully he was on the jugs machine uh, in the off season and can avoid some of those drops that he had. And I, and I would rather have Mike Davis than Kenny Galladay. Uh, check out our, our Mike Davis video on YouTube. Uh, and we, we've talked about him a little bit. Again, he has no competition uh, in the backfield for Atlanta. They cut uh, JV and Hawkins. Yeah. So sorry, truthers on that one. He gone. Um, so yeah, I mean, Mike Davis is the guy. So I, I would much rather have all four of those guys before I'd even just what my brain think about taking Kenny Galladay. <laughs> Completely agree. All right. Uh, we have a couple honorable mentions that I, w- I want to talk about on a high level. First up, Jamar Chase. Why are you <sighs> concerned about Jamar Chase? And Well, not even concerned, but why would you, are you walking away from mock drafts right now without Jamar Chase on your team? Uh, can, where, where is he going right now? Uh, on ESPN, it says his average draft position is 80. Um, he, he hasn't played football in a year and a half. He, he, he opted out of college last year with LSU. I know he has history with Joe Burrow. But they have two legitimate wide receivers in T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Jamar Chase I, is currently going as pick 61 in redraft. So that's the beginning of the sixth round? Yeah, one of the first picks in the sixth round. And, and he's going before T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, right? Yeah. That's wrong. Like, that's just trying to hit a rookie to try to hit a rookie. Yeah. With, with that... T. Higgins was excellent last year. Tyler Boyd wasn't bad either. Tyler Boyd is a reception machine and can catch the ball. Jamar Chase is the third wide receiver in that offense. You know why he's going this high? No, I don't. Because of what Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow did together at LSU. Yeah, but I don't care. That's not the NFL. And he hasn't played for a year and a half. Jason, when was the last time you did something or you didn't do something for a year and a half and you're like, all right, I'm going to be, I'm going to do it again and try to be good at it. (laughs) I I don't know. Nothing. Yeah. uh, Nobody does that. Jamar pick or Jamar chase finishes preseason with four drops on five targets. (laughs) That's 80%. (laughs) That's four, unbelievable. Four drops on five targets. I'm just saying I could do that. I literally could do that. You literally, yeah, you literally could do that. I could do that. My you might one even catch, catch one of them. Well, my the catch I would have would be a screen pass, but damn it, it would count as a catch. Well, he dro- He had a screen pass and dropped it. No, but in the last preseason game, they they yeah, just look back at the Belichick season. Play. Man, he was the best receiver in college football in 2019 with Burrow, 84 catches, almost 1,800 yards, 20 touchdowns. Yeah, hey, I mean, uh, and this is off of ESPN's website, so I obviously don't know this off the top of my head, but uh, the Bengals had a third wide receiver on the field, 82 percent of their offensive plays uh, last year, which is the second most in the NFL. So playing time won't be an option. I just, or sorry, a, a challenge or an obstacle. No, I think it I will just, be. I, if he's dropping the ball that I much, literally think they're, they're not going to play him. He loses snaps to Auden Tate. Oh, okay. I really do. I really think he's going to lose snaps at the beginning of the season to Auden Tate. Like, <sighs> I think rough. you're looking at somebody that's going to be in on like, I don't know. 20% of snaps to start the year. Yeah, if here's ESPN's projection. 116 targets, 72 catches, uh 930 yards and six touchdowns. I'll, I, take, I'll, I'll, I'll take I'll take the under. I'll take the under. Yeah. He is projected for 169 points just for the record. Nice. But definitely taking the under. Yeah, I mean, I understand, you know, the explosive rookie angle that a lot of people are trying to take this year, especially after Justin Jefferson, J. Jeffy L. Heffy, and his season last year. Everybody's thinking that maybe Jamar Chase is the sure thing. 
He That's ain't. still an abnormal year, though. That like what happened yeah. is is there very no, abnormal. There was no preseason last year. I think scoring was inflated in general across the board. Like there was no preseason. There was no defensive tune-ups. There was nothing. It reminded me of the the um what was it the the stri- I don't want to call it the strike, but like the strike shortened year when they couldn't agree between the NFL and the NFLPA. <clears throat> yeah, and the and the when the uh, referees were on strike, and you had all the all oh my the, god, the wonderful Seattle Green Bay. One guy rules it a touchdown. One guy rules it an interception. That was fantastic. <laughs> like, I'm not even mad about that game. That game yeah. was great. I have never been so happy watching football. Yeah, this this is also uh, per the ESPN site, and this is this is truly where we're at. Right, Chase has elite upside. And is immediately on the wide receiver three radar. No. You you don't take that in round six. No. No, you don't. So, there's no way he's ever ending up on a team. I will be happy to take the value that people are letting slide by in T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. And if he blows up, hey, I'm cool with that. But uh, he has not shown me anything so far. Somebody else... Going thereabouts, well, actually going a little bit later, but another rookie receiver that I will not be drafting this season is Jalen Waddle, receiver for the Miami Dolphins. Waddle, waddle, then he waddled away, waddle, 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 till the very next day, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> That went on like 10 seconds longer than it needed to. Well, but- Jalen walked up to the quarterback stand and he said to the man running the stand, Jalen Waddle is not going to be it this year. He's the wide receiver three on that team behind Devontae Parker and Will Fuller. He has two attack of Iloa throwing the football. Not great. At least for now <laughs> before they trade for Deshaun Watson. Um, yeah, I just, I don't see a third wide receiver being viable in this offense. I I'd yep. really question whether or not even a second wide receiver will be viable in that offense. And uh, he's currently going as pick 100 uh, in half point PPR redraft leagues, um, which is basically the front third of the ninth round. So he's going towards the beginning of the ninth round. And uh, that's just not a price that I am willing to pay for uh, some Jalen Waddle. So, yeah, that's... uh, I mean, especially given the fact that he's going in front of guys like LaVisca Chenault. Like, no. Oh, I know. That's bad. That's so bad. <laughs> that's really um, bad. Like, LaVisca is going to be the wide receiver one on that team, but I digress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not going to be taking a third wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins. No. I, I don't know what else I don't know what else or other analysis you want to hear from me. There's not enough targets there to make him that viable when he's clearly the third best on yeah. their on their roster when not suspended. <laughs> and he's going in front of AJ Brown, Mike Williams, Corey Davis, like uh and Antonio Brown. I'm sorry, Antonio Brown. Sorry. He's also going in front of AJ Dillon. My bad. Yeah. There were, uh, there were 35, uh, wide receivers that had a hundred or more targets last year. Uh, the two guys that we just talked about, um, I mean, maybe they get to a hundred. I I would be slightly surprised, honestly, but, uh, AJ green, uh, surprisingly had 104 targets last year. Uh, 47 catches on those 104 targets. I love uh, that offense so much. So yeah, they're going to throw, throw enough. I just, uh, I don't know. Jamar Chase, uh, no thanks. And Jalen Waddle. I, Hey, I would rather miss out on a rookie wide receiver because I'd rather try to hit on a rookie running back. Okay. Maybe. Uh, well, you know, we've been negative so far to this point. So 
I'm going to try to end on a more positive note. Okay. And one rookie wide receiver that I actually do like this season is Devonta Smith for the Eagles. Um, especially Interesting. After, I mean, especially after trading for Minshew as a backup to Jalen Hurts or, you know, potential takeover for Jalen Hurts after Jalen Hurts comes out and throws three picks a game for the first four weeks. Um, I'm just saying I think Devonta Smith could be the guy. He, If you've watched the preseason at all, he's perpetually open. Like, he does not struggle to get open. He runs wide open. Yeah, he's pretty fast. Uh, it's not even that. It's just the route running. Like, he has guys juking out of their shoes left and right. So, I, I just think that Devonta is going to turn into a crutch for whoever holds on as the quarterback one for that team. And if it is Jalen Hurts, I think he'll be great. So, um, he's currently Ooh. going in what he's currently going as pick 87 and half PPR remit or redraft 87 Ooh. is about eh, front half of the eighth round. I, um, <laughs> all that sounds good. He's not very big. He's going to get the crap. He's tall. He's just him. skinny. Yeah. He's, he's going to get jammed real hard. I'd also say he's not going against uh, team's number one cornerbacks, uh, which I would expect him to be matched up against uh, in the regular season. So I don't put too much stock in preseason stuff, especially because, I mean, I don't know, dude, they're not going to be putting the number one DB on Jalen Rager, probably. Uh, so I, I think that he's going to get checked real hard uh, by the number one DB. And if that's the case... I, I do think that limits his up, upside slightly. And the fact that he has Jalen Hurts throwing in the ball also also <laughs> hurts his upside. Yes, yes, it does. But like three guys all growing or four guys all going in a row. Robbie Anderson, Devonta Smith, Will Fuller. Like I think I'd rather would rather have Devonta Smith out of those three. It's a, that's a rough little stretch there. Yeah, Robbie Anderson with Sam Darnold throwing the ball. Will Fuller with Tua throwing the ball. But you also have Devontae Parker there, too. Like, Probably take me some Devonta Smith. Yeah, rough, rough quarterback situations. But, but that's why they're going as low as they are. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, that is going to do it for the Sackos. Thank you guys so much for watching listening doing all the things that you do uh thank you for um subscribing to our youtube it's really gone well over the last month especially please find us on youtube and subscribe if you have not already uh, we post a lot of shorter clips and things from the podcast and so if you don't have all the time in the world to listen to a 45 minute hour long fantasy football podcast you can um, find us on YouTube and watch some, you know, three, five, maybe eight or nine minute long clips. And you can see our beautiful faces. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's just an added bonus. Definitely I mean, a plus. Yeah. If that's not what you're looking for, I don't know what, <laughs> what you possibly could be looking for. Again, if, if, if you have drafts this weekend, uh, over Labor Day, good luck to everybody. Uh, check out our rankings, the fancy football sackos.com. Uh, Again, like, subscribe, uh, leave us reviews, uh, five stars on any platform helps get the name out uh, and, and helps kind of put us on the map. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any comments or anything, uh, we're looking forward to getting into uh, into week one next week, um, maybe talking about some guys that are going undrafted. Uh, they're sitting on the waiver wire that maybe you want to add in anticipation of week one that we think could maybe explode. Uh, and then we're we're attacking waivers after that, um, trying to get you guys the best team as as we can as we kind of uh, wrap up draft season and transition to the real deal. Again, you can't lose your league in the draft, but I think you can win it um, because you can add whoever you're missing on the waiver wire after the season starts. So best of luck to everybody this weekend. Enjoy the time. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoys their Labor Day and we'll uh, catch you next week. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.